Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little while but I am back with a room makeover today. If you have been watching my vlogs you may have seen this in real time. However, I am here to show you the overview of the whole room transformation and I hope that you love it. This room actually had two closets built in. I ended up ripping one of them out as you will see in a second and I ended up keeping the other one but glamming it up entirely, giving it a fresh makeover. So you will see that in a part two video where I do kind of like custom built in shelves evolving. And before we jump into it, do make sure that you like this video, leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future room makeovers coming up. I have recently done a kitchen makeover and my mum and dad's master bedroom makeover. So there's lots and lots of content coming your way. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing that I wanted to do was to remove this wooden lintel from above the window where they hung curtains. It just wasn't necessary and I just thought it was a little bit dated. So I took it off. Demolition is definitely one of my favorite things to do. I feel like you get your creative juices flowing because you've got a clear canvas to work with. If you wanna see the whole process in depth of how I demoed this space, then you can go and watch the vlogs that I will link in the top right of this video right now. I did get questions and concerns as to why I was ripping out the built-in wardrobes. Honestly, they were just poorly made and they made the room look old. So I wanted to create something that was much more fresh, up to date and suited the room when I was finished with it. And by the way, this is my partner Rob's parents at Spare bedroom that they kind of just wanted to give a little bit of a makeover to so as you can see the house is slightly older it's got older kind of like skirting boards and fittings and everything it just needed a bit of a glamorization so I just did my very best to take out everything that would potentially make it look old so that we could have a fresh base to get the walls replastered we didn't get the entire thing replastered only the areas of concern that were a little bit bumpy because one of the walls was absolutely fine and the ceiling just needed plastering where the boards had lifted a little bit We tried to reuse as much as we could in that room that could be saved. So with these skirting boards, I ended up stripping off years and years of layers of thick, glossy paintwork. And I just repainted them with some of the wood primer and undercoat from Valspar, which worked really, really well. This is something I've never done before because I hadn't really had to, having worked in mainly new build rooms before. But as I said, this room it was slightly older, so it's a slightly older property, and the walls did need a bit of a sanding off all of the years of paintwork, just so that I could get a smoother finish for the new paintwork. I'm just using some water to wipe away any dust that occurred because of the kind of sanding process. If I can stress one thing to you, paint your radiators when you're doing a room makeover, it makes the world of difference. This transformation here, this closet that I ended up keeping and making over was one of my favorite parts of the whole room makeover. I think I wanna take this door off. So I'm gonna take it off the hinges and then clear out the inside. Use my trusty AI works drill. Yeah, when I say this thing is so clever, so it like, it'll open just using this open up the um i don't even know what this bit is called but like it but it holds your it'll open, it'll open up the chuck to hold your piece in place and then you turn it the other way and it locks it in place so you don't have to like do it all yourself if you're not confident in that I'm gonna leave that drill linked in the description box. I hope it's really helpful because I always get loads of messages asking, what is a good drill as a beginner? I'm scared to use a drill. That one is a no brainer, honestly. It just makes life so easy. Now onto paint stripping the hinges. These are the hinges that I just took off that door. They were covered in paint, as you can see, years and years of just repainting everything. You know how it goes. So some paint stripper, leave it for an hour. The paint comes off, they're brand new. We're reusing as much as we can in this room, guys. I've painted this door all fresh white, sanded it down, painted it white, and it looks so much better, but it needs another coat, but this is actually the back of the door. So I'm gonna turn it over, and then I'm gonna attach these. So we're gonna do some kind of like decorative molding on the door, just to make it pop a little bit more, and make it a bit more of a statement. So I'm gonna use my mitre saw to cut these down at 45 degree angles, fit them as like a lower half, like kind of two thirds down is the longer part, and then we'll do another smaller square about a third of the way up. So it's kind of like really decorative and nice. And we got this molding from just a local DIY store. So I can't link it because I don't have a website, but it looks like this. It's quite thick. I would say it's about, hmm, I would say that's about one and a half centimeters thick here. And then it's about an inch and a half 
thick this way. Um, but it's really nice design, so I'm hoping it's going to add a bit of like pizzazz. So I'm going to flip it now and then I'm going to measure it all and then cut it down to size. We've now made a line all the way down here. I'm going to do the rest on the other sides. Okay. guys i'm watching that back and just like shadow you didn't explain one single thing like you guys are probably just sitting there baffled as i am right now and i'm not even gonna lie i don't even think i can explain it i'm just hoping that you understand what i'm doing basically i'm creating a smaller square and then a bigger square well, bigger square a rectangle at the top with a seven centimeter gap between the two of them and then all around the outside and in fact you will see in a second the base of the door i actually gave it a 15 centimeter gap from the base of the door so do you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna draw you a little picture i'm gonna pop it on the screen now there we go now you will know what i mean i hope that helps <laughs> screenshot it because i can't explain it <laughs> Okay, in the previous clip, I was using my mitre saw, but you can use a mitre box. You can get them from B&Q for five pounds and a normal handheld saw um, to cut the angles at 45 degree angles so that when you join them, they create 90 degree angles and it creates a fantastic, perfect square for you. Most of the parts have been cut. Now it's time to do the glue up. I need to just cut one more piece, but I need to go get some more wood because I ran out. So I'm just gonna get you. I'm just gonna show you how I glue stuff up. Okay, so what we're gonna use is Gorilla Glue. I'm gonna Gorilla Glue all of this down, and then I'm gonna pin it down afterwards with my nail gun. I actually wanna get a different one. I actually wanna get a different nail gun. This is the Titan TTB517 STP. It takes 25 millimeter nails or staplers, also known as Brad nails, um, but I just don't like how like the front of it works. It's okay for like upholstery and stuff, but I would prefer to get, you know, the ones where the, where the kind of the bit points out and you push it, they're much easier to use. This one's a little bit difficult to use. You know, that nail gun is actually perfectly fine and it's a really reasonable price. It's just got a really short lead, which is annoying for big room makeovers, which I often do. So I think it'd be perfect for upholstery or if you're just someone that wants it for like small projects, but big projects where you've got to move around the room quickly, that's not the one. So I actually do have a new nail gun, which I love. It's battery operated um, and you will see it in my mum and dad room makeover, which is coming up very soon. So subscribe so you don't miss it. Essentially, all I'm doing here is wood gluing the wood into place, securing it down with brad nails so it doesn't go anywhere. The wood glue will create a really strong bond um, over time and then wiping down off the excess glue so that it doesn't stick or create any unnecessary texture. So I've got some texture on the door from when I was sanding it and I was trying to decide if I was gonna paint strip it to remove all of the excess gloss, etc. Uh, so just to kind of smooth things over, I'm just using any old filler to use on the door. I ended up making up my own concoction of um, excess sand dust um, and wood glue, which I've used before and worked amazing. But this time round, I'm not sure what happened, but it was so strong and it created such a tough surface. As you can see here, I'm trying my hardest to sand it down. I could not sand that down. I was sweating trying to sand that down. So don't do that. So I had to try to make it as smooth as possible. I didn't get it as smooth as I wanted. So maybe just use normal caulk for this in the future. I ended up just using a primer and undercoat wood paint and then I'm using a brush just to give it a smooth finish rather than a bubbled finish that you usually get when you use a roller. <laughs> a 
Okay, we've jumped a little bit here, but I didn't want to bore you with sanding down the inside of this closet and then painting it and filling in all the like holes and stuff. So I did kind of go ahead and do that. And you're joining me at the part where I'm taking off the air vents that are no longer needed and then some filler to fill the big, big holes. And I'm now using a paint block spray paint. Is that the right term? Paint block spray paint <laughs> to cover up that pink on the wall because I could not cover that with normal paint for anything. Now I'm caulking the edges of the skirting to give everything a smooth finish then I'm going to go over everything again with white emulsion just to uh, get it to a stage that it looks pristine. Guys I'm here at the house look look at that gorgeous door I'm obsessed with this door oh my god the flooring in here as well I feel like this flooring, if you sanded it all back, maybe filled in between the joints somehow, stained it or painted it, that would be such a nice flooring. Like that hard flooring looks gorgeous against that door. So one of the big things in the room, oh, by the way, there's the door makeover. Doesn't she look gorgeous now? See a little bit of wood trim just makes everything look gorgeous. Um, yeah, just we wanted to put some carpet in here to make it more cozy and give the room a proper transformation. Yeah, this carpet is laid look at that really nice um the whole room just feels so different now like so so different it just feels like an actual room it feels totally complete carpets can be so difficult to choose we got a sample that looked a lot lighter when it was the smaller sample and then it looked so dark when it was actually on the floor so um, when it came to choosing the paint colors for the walls I had to think twice but we ended up going with nestled and matted off by the crown and L decoration collaboration She's foldable. Mm. Hello. Hello, lovelies. How are we doing? Got the paint. I've got the paint. L. This is the L decoration by Crown. This is nestled. I'm so excited to get this on the wall. Oh, the delivery didn't come, so I had to go and get some from Home Base instead. Look at that colour. That is so gorgeous. But I'm so excited to get this on the walls. Oh my gosh. So excited, like this, this is gonna look so good by the end of today. The There's been paints before that I've used and I've only needed one coat. If this ends up being this paint today, it's gonna be a miracle. So I'm excited about that because it's not cheap stuff. I'm not gonna lie, it's not cheap stuff. L Decoration, Crown is a very affordable brand, but the L Decoration stuff is a bit more bougie budget. So we'll see, I'll give you a, a review at the end, but I'm excited about the color, I really am. Guys, I don't know what happened. I think I've lost a memory card because I've lost like me painting the walls and just bits and bobs here and there. But anyway, painting walls is boring anyway. So I'm sure you would be much more interested to see me creating a color block painted wall. Essentially, all I did was mark out 10 centimeters in from each side using my laser level. Again, I will link this down below for you. It is a life saver. And then I'm using matted off, which is a slightly darker tone than nestled to create this little rectangle feature wall. I just used a normal roller to roll it. And if you're wondering what I'm using in my hand, this is the Pelican Paint Bucket by Worcester Brush. Fantastic. You need it. Go and get it now. So I've painted this little section. This is the second coat, so I'm gonna to start to strip off the tape and see how it looks. I'm really excited. What I'm really hoping is that the frog tape doesn't peel off the paint that's underneath. So I'm gonna go really slowly, but I really, really hope that it doesn't. So fingers crossed. Peeling, the tape is peeling and I just don't know why. It's been drying for ages. It's drying for days and days and days. I do not rate green frog tape. It's too, too tough. So guys, I had left the paint underneath to dry for days. However, I have since learned that you are not meant to use green frog tape when you are making like these kind of wall decal things. Instead, there is a yellow frog tape. However, even with that, a lot of people have said they just don't rate the frog tape. Uh, it's too strong, it peels everything off. So I ended up having to do a little kind of like fix here with a straight edge and uh, the paint, which ended up working perfectly fine. In the future, I would recommend just doing a bit of research to see what other tapes there are out there. Maybe just a simple masking tape, um, or there are probably much weaker tapes that you can use that still give the same effect and still give very crisp, sharp lines. It looked great in the end, was a big kerfuffle, and I just wanted to show you that because not every single one of my projects goes to plan. I do have stressful moments and I do swear every so often. I'm very sorry about that, but I thought I'd leave it in to show my frustration. <laughs> 
Let's bring it back to the very beginning and see just how far we've come. The room was a little bit dated. We had old wooden floors, layers and layers of gloss everywhere, unsmooth walls, built-in wardrobes which just weren't fit in the vibe check and we just wanted to make everything look much more modern and much more welcoming and cosy and you'd want to go and sit in there and sleep in there and read in there and everything. So this is how it all looks now. Guys, you can see these drawers transformation in the video that I'm linking in the top right of the video now. And I really hope that you enjoyed this makeover. As I said, I've got a part two coming, which is the built in for the wardrobe that you will see in just a second. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my future makeovers. And I really thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care guys, lots of love, bye. Mwah.